Hello everyone, Tanya Siddiqui again, and today's topic is about child guiding strategies, and it is very important for adults to guide children's behavior so that children can grow into sensitive, accountable, and responsible adults. Behavior guidance is an ongoing process, and it is a task for children to self-regulate. And therefore, the gu guiding strategies must be tailored for each individual child and must be based on the realistic expectations of children by understanding their age developmental level, their needs and abilities. And um, children's uh, behavior is influenced by their age developmental level, their culture, their environment and adult around them. And when children are able to self-regulate, as we said in the previous episode, they acquire self-esteem, self-respect, better relationships, and problem-solving skills. And there are two things that play an important role in uh, children's um, hindering or promoting self-regulation skills. And that those are, number one is environment, and the other one is interactions that the children have between themselves and their caregivers or adults around them. Therefore, these two things must be carefully planned. For example, with respect to interactions, the children must have access to caregivers who are responsive, sensitive, loving, and who can make the child's environment safe and secure for the child so the child can uh, trust this the world. And the environment, should be clutter-free open space where children can work, play, and move around freely. And it must be pleasant to the eye, it must be beautiful, well-planned, organized, and safe. And there must be pred predictability in the environment. For example, children must have advanced notices and have sufficient times for changes and transitions. And there must be balanced of rest times and activity times so that the children neither gets overwhelmed with a lot of activities, neither they feel bored with the many activity, uh, with the less activities. And also the materials and equipments that are provided to children must be sturdy, uh, clean, neat, um, and must be modified to accommodate all children in the center. Now I'm going to talk to you about the uh, child behavior guidance strategies that are mentioned in community care licensing regulations of British Columbia, Canada. And these are in section 51, as you can see 51. Uh, and it says a licensee must ensure that the behavior guidance is appropriate to the age and developmental level of children who is receiving this guidance. And the, uh, these guidance strategies that the operators of child care centers are using must be in a written statement and must be provided to the employees and parents so they are aware of those child guidance strategies and they must be consistent. If there is a child, uh, there is a care plan, these guiding strategies must be consistent with the care plan and if the care plan uh, mentions that restraint be used as child guiding strategies, then these restraints must be administered only by the person who is trained in using these restraints. Otherwise, uh, restraining a child by another child or an employee is not permitted in child care regulations. So unless it is in the care plan and administered by the person who is trained in administering those restraints, also, there, uh, it says uh, on, in 52, our, uh, section 52, it says that shoving, hitting, or shaking by an employee is not permitted or by another child, or confinement or physical restraint by another child, and, uh, and uh, harsh belittling or degrading treatment by an employee or, or another child, verbal, emotional, or physical uh, humiliation of the child is not permitted spanking or any other form of corporal punishment is not allowed and uh, also uh, depriving a child of meal snacks or rest or necessary use of toilet as a form of punishment is not uh, allowed in the legislation and then it also says 
a, a licensee or a child care operator must ensure that a child is not while under the care or, or supervision of the licensee subject to any of the following forms of abuse or neglect as described in section one of schedule H. So we, we are going to look at the definitions of in sexual uh, schedule H, but right now it says emotional abuse and financial abuse, neglect, physical abuse and sexual abuse is not allowed. And let's see the definitions in schedule H is here, down here. Um, So it's here, here, this is a uh, schedule H and it says here down here. Uh, so, uh, uh, so schedule H defines the physical abuse. What is a physical abuse? What is a neglect? What neglect looks like? So neglect means, which means the failure of a care provider to meet the needs of a child, including food, shelter, care, or supervision, and physical abuse is, which means any physical force that is excessive for or is inappropriate to a situation involving a child and perpetrated by a person not in care. And then the sexual abuse is, which means any sexual behavior directed towards a child by an employee of the licensee, a volunteer, or any other person in a position of trust, power, or authority and it, and it includes any sexual exploitation, whether consensual or not, and sexual activity between children if the difference in age or power between them is so significant that the older or more, more powerful child is clearly taking sexual advantage of the younger or less powerful child. So these are some of the uh, things that are mentioned in child care licensing regulations. I am really excited to introduce you to our guest today. She has been working in the field of early childhood education since 1990 and currently directs the Wollaston Child Care Center and is an adjunct faculty member at Fisher College and Bunker Hill Community College in Massachusetts. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education, a Master's of Education and a Doctorate in early childhood education. So let's welcome Dr. Patty Plummer Wilson. Hello, Ms. Dr. Wilson, and thank you for being here today to share your knowledge and exper expertise with us. Certainly, thank you so much for having me. I really have, be I've been in this field for 30 years now and I absolutely love what I do. So I'm very excited to share my experiences with others. All right. So please, can you tell us about yourself, your career trajectory, what role you play and uh, what type of center you're working in right now? Sure. Um, so I decided when I attended college as an undergrad at sort of the traditional age that I would study elementary education. I always envisioned myself teaching slightly older children. I landed in early childhood almost sort of accidentally. I attended college in Boston and the first summer that I was going to stay in Boston rather than going back home to Maine, about three weeks before I was ready to start a summer job, my car stopped working and I discovered it was beyond repair. Um, so being a college student with very limited income, I had to find a position accessible by public transportation very quickly. I found a job as an assistant teacher at a program for at-risk infants and toddlers, um, which initially I thought, oh my goodness, what will these babies and toddlers do? They don't really talk. They don't read. I'll be changing diapers. I'm not sure about this, but I absolutely fell in love. Um, and then after graduation, I began work as a preschool teacher and I worked as a preschool teacher, infant teacher, toddler teacher. I've been a preschool coordinator, um, an accreditation support specialist, helping centers um, with their NAYC accreditation. Um, then time came for me to have my own family. When my my children were small. I owned and operated a small three classroom program, um, which I had the opportunity to sell right before the children 
you know, kind of as they entered elementary school. Um, and since then, I've been involved in nonprofit child care administration. Um, in my other life, in my side pastime, I teach early childhood courses um, at a couple of local colleges. Oh, great. I also started my career as an assistant teacher. <laughs> okay. So I can relate. So uh, what's your uh, center's child guiding st strategy or your child guiding strategy? What works, do you think? Okay, now when you mean child guiding strategy, do you mean in terms of child guidance and social emotional development or do you mean um, the guiding philosophy behind the program? Like your philosophy on how to guide children's behavior for them to acquire optimal development? Oh, sure. Um, so basically, and I will read for you actually our center's specific child guidance policy, um, which I have modified. I'm not the founding director, director at our center, so I modified it a little bit, but I can't take credit um, for the whole document. Okay. The root word for discipline is derived from the word disciple someone who follows the teachings of another. Children are not born knowing or understanding how to behave appropriately. It is guidance and it's the guidance and the support that parents provide from the beginning of life that the Wollaston Child Care Center values and intends to build upon in the center. Guidance and support by caring and supportive adults helps the children to learn to understand and manage their feelings, as well as cope with the challenges that are posed each day as they encounter other people and situations. Mm -hmm. Through those interactions, children are to learn appropriate ways to express their satisfactions, their needs, and a wide range of feelings. Um, the learning of self-control and discipline can vary according to a number of factors. For example, a child's temperament, um, their home experience, um, even physical issues such as illness can impact their behavior. Um, our, our center staff expects that we will work closely and consistently with children and families. Okay. Um, as inner controls continue to develop, we really want children to be able to live harmoniously and peacefully with one another in a group. Um, one of the resources that we use a lot in teaching our children, we mm -hmm. have is the pyramid model. Is that something that you're familiar with? Not really. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> am I talking too much or no? Oh, that's fine. Of course, you have to talk and tell us. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're participating. We have for the past two years in something called the pyramid model project. Okay. Um, where our center is working actually with an external coach mm -hmm. that's helping us to implement pyramid model practices and to kind of summarize very quickly what the pyramid model is about. Mm -hmm. It's the notion kind of in a pyramid shape that at the basis of the pyramid, all children really need um, supportive environments, okay. relationships yes. with a well-trained workforce, mm -hmm. and then sort of some of the children might really need a little more intensive kind of teaching and support around social emotional skills. Okay. And then a very few children might need, you know, help from really specialized resources. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice, actually. And, you know, this uh, philosophy aligns with yours when you were working as a child care uh, uh, educator? Yes. Yeah. It, yes, it does. Um, I think it's essential actually for both teachers and particular for program directors to mm -hmm. find a place of employment that aligns with their personal philosophy. You know, as an administrator, it would be incredibly difficult, one, to explain the philosophy to prospective and existing families and train staff in the philosophy if it was not something that they were in agreement with. That's and right. I, think if, I think as a teacher, if yeah. one found themselves working in a school that really had a totally different approach than their ideology, mm -hmm. it could lead to kind of just constant conflict. 
Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. You know, in terms of the supervisor or the director expecting you to sort of act in a certain way and implement the goals of the program, if yours were completely the opposite, yeah. that just uh, for me would be constant frustration, I think for both. Yeah, and, of course. Yes, everybody, I think it has to align with your philosophy wherever you are working. That's true. Mm -hmm. So do you have any message for early childhood educators and parents about child guiding strategies they can use? Sure. Um, first of all, a message to early childhood educators about this field in general. Mm -hmm. This is a career that's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's essential that you really enjoy what you do. We spend far too much of our lives working to do something that we dislike. Um, and for parents, when we think about child guidance, and I say this from personal experience, um, my identical, tw identical twin boys who are now 19, um, that were perhaps some of the more challenging toddlers I've met in my 30 year career. Um, one, be patient, to be patient with the children and also patient with yourself because sometimes that first strategy that you try, it might not work or what might work one day or with one child might not the next. And to really kind of take note of the small successes mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully, you know, over years, you'll see the fruits of all of your labor. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. You're welcome.